Hello, welcome back to another episode of Let's Learn to Play Hearts of Iron 4. So, when we last left our brave Reich, well, maybe brave isn't the right word, um, we had just finished conquering Czechoslovakia, and we are at war with France, but no one else. This is a good position to be in, um, although they are bombing our submarines. That's fine. So, in terms of what to do next, we need to figure out how we are going to conquer France. And there's a few ways to do this. Um, obviously, historically, we could invade uh, Belgium and possibly the Netherlands and go around Maginot. In fact, that's one of the um, national focuses that... Um, where is it here? Or with France, around Maginot. I know this mouse cursor is still not lined up, and I, it's driving me nuts, because I can't figure out what it is. But you'll just have to bear with me here. So, around Maginot, we can con it basically gives us free war goals against Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg, which is this little guy right here. Luxembourg. So, oh, our planes are flying by. Um, so, that's one option. However, I'm almost certain that these guys, um, if I get the war goal on them, will be guaranteed by the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland over here. So, uh, we don't want to be at war with these guys just yet, anyways. Um, because their air force is massive and their navy is massiver. So, other options include um, naval invasions in the north of France, as well as uh, paratroopers landing behind their lines. Anything we can do to get around or behind them without going through it. So let's take a look at what we have here research. Do we have Marines? We don't have Marines, but we do have paratroopers. Do we have any paratroopers in the field or do we have to train some? Uh, we do not. Well, let's start training some. SS uh, paratroopers. What do these guys look like? All right, let's just, we've got some army experience. Oh, about to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, infantry, paratroopers, paratroopers, paratroopers. What are what's our combat width is twelve? Uh, yeah, let's get that up to twenty, since these guys aren't just like scout divisions; they actually will be fighting. Um, all right, so that's thirty-five combat width. Let's add some um, support artillery. I'd say. Recon. I don't think we need engineers because our defense is not as important for these guys. Uh, defense and entrenchment, they won't be defending all that much. They'll be off uh, on the offense more often than not. Anti-air, well, I don't think that... We'll save this for now and we'll start training some. And the support anti-air is really, really good if you don't have... Um, let's get six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight of those. Uh, and let's unpause here. The support anti-air is really good if you don't have air superiority. So we have air superiority over Western Germany and Eastern Germany, so over our territory. But we don't... Oh, what's this? You can invite... Oh, I can invite Japan to our faction. I think I will. They are at war with... Never mind. I will not. Um, so Japan is very interested in joining our faction. However, they are uh, at war with the Soviet Union. People's Republic. Okay, and it seems to be that they're doing okay. I mean, they have all of China already. So, um, oh, we need more research. Forgot about this. Let's get the next level of paratroopers since uh, we're on time for that, and we're going to be using them anyways. Um, so, I'm a little hesitant to do this because the Soviet Union, let's take a look at how many divisions they have here. They have between 143 and 244 divisions, and we have, like, 84. So even half of their army, assuming, you know, on the higher end of our predictions here, could really do well against us. Now, granted, we don't share a border just yet, but it also means that I have to deal with their navy in the Baltic Sea, and it's just a lot more to deal with, essentially. In the meantime, these uh, check yourself to, uh, army is going to line up against Poland. Uh, ah, excellent. So, another somebody. We want J Japan to win, right? We want Japan to do well. However, we just don't want 
to be at war with the Soviet Union just yet. So, uh, let's... These um, paratroopers are going to take a while to train. And meanwhile, we've got SS Panzers on the way. Okay. Let's take a look at our logistics here. Don't have enough artillery, but we're doing relatively okay for everything else. Uh, basically, the first number is how much uh, our supply changes by each day. Oh, field hospital, excellent. And let's get next level reconnaissance. Uh, this is how much it changes by you. Obviously, my met here. Let me use my other screen to line my mouse up. So that's how much it changes by each day. The first column on the left. Um, so for fighters, we gain fighters every day. Uh, for self-propelled artillery, light tanks, medium tanks, we're, we're gaining all this stuff except for towed artillery. We're not gaining any of that per day. So we're going to have to increase that. The second number... Uh, uh, to the, the column on the right is how much our supply is. So we still need support equipment, light tanks, medium tanks, but we have excess fighters, we have excess infantry equipment, and we have excess motorized. Um, so let's go here and take a look at our support equipment. Um, hang on, that doesn't seem right. Oh, fate of Yugoslavia. We are going to... What do you think? We could annex all of Yugoslavia. World, world tension goes up, but I mean, who cares? Uh, we could puppet both of them, which they would help us as, you know, puppet states. Or we could make Croatia a puppet and annex the rest. So Croatia would be, like, presumably where Croatia is. Um, and I think I'm going to annex all of Yugoslavia. Just because I prefer to have territory than puppets. So... We've got a bunch more military factories that we're going to use to increase the amount of artillery we're making. Well, maybe not that much. Um, increase the amount of infantry equipment. More dockyards. Uh, let's see. We're just making submarines. I'm going to add some destroyers. And we're going to add those to the Kriegsmarine. Since we will have to eventually... Is this... Oh, they're attacking my convoys. Yeah, we will have to eventually fight a naval war. Um, so we need to start building up for that now. All right. New national focus. Now that we have the fate of Yugoslavia, we can reassert some eastern claims. Uh, giving us claims on Poland and preparing us for war with Poland. So we will say, give us Danzig or we will go to war with you. Um, and they will make a decision. They will deliver us their response. And they are not in a faction and not guaranteed by Great Britain. Although we have to keep an eye on that and see if that changes. Now, the Soviet Union and Japan, I'm really thinking about this invite to faction. Um, about going to war with it. Because this would mean we would be at war with the Soviet Union. Because all of a sudden the Axis would be at war with the common turn. However, um, how are paratroopers doing? Almost halfway there. Um, we may or may not be able to fight them. Because here's, here's the way I'm thinking it. If we end up at war with them now, it may be costly to us, but at least they're fighting both us and Japan. If we wait until we're better prepared, we could be obviously better prepared to fight them. But they may have already taken care of Japan. Or Japan may have taken care of them and taken all their land. And that's not something we want either. So, lots to think about it. I think we will at least wait until we've defeated France and freed up the bulk of our army here. Which is holding off the, the French menace. And, how's our air? We are going to need, oh, uh, before I forget, we need to make transport planes. Transport plane. Uh, these are quite important because we need these to uh, drop paratroopers. Obviously, they need some kind of plane to jump out of. All right, we're going to need more than eight a year. I'm going to borrow some from here, borrow some from here, borrow some from... Oh, radio is really good. Uh, so radio, 
when my troops are in a battle, I wish I was fighting a battle so I could show you, but when the troops are in a battle, there's only so many units on the front line, and radio really helps your units get more guys on the front line. It seems complicated, but you know what I mean. I'll show you if I remember it later. Also, radio detection, very important. We can uh, It'll let us build radio stations, uh, ra or radar stations, uh, that will give us visibility over coastal areas and enemy areas and give us bonuses for all sorts of things. Uh, particularly fighting in the air. Alright. So, unfortunately this war is going to be rather uneventful. Um, as attacking into the Maginot, as you might imagine, would be absolutely suicide. Especially with, I mean, look at how many guys they've got there. Even even if they didn't have maximum level fortifications, um, it would still be suicide to attack into here. So... Um, Oh, Italy's at our border. How is our relationship with Italy? Yeah, they like us. Let's sign a uh, non-aggression pact with them, just to be safe. Is Albania still independent? It is still independent. It's 1939, so Italy has an uh, uh, idea. Oh, Civil War is finally over. So, um, Italy has an idea. Uh, not an idea. Um... That was just the end of the Spanish Civil War. Albanian occupation. Yeah, they're working on it now, actually. So, um, this will let them just get Albania. If Albania agrees. Albania might be like, no. And then have a few choice words for them that I was about to say. Um, yeah, King Zog might be like, yeah, go take a hike, Italy. I mean, look at this guy. He's just, he's the most adorable Albanian king. Um, so, King Zog might... Uh, tell Italy to go take a hike, and then they're at war. Um, and then Italy will really, really want access through my territory. Is it still just Japan? Japan? Yep. Um, Alright. Regarding Spain, the Spanish Civil War has ended, and um, these guys now have something called uh, recovering from Civil War, which means they are much less likely to join a faction or expand. Right, so this just affects how the AI makes decisions. So if you play as Spain, that doesn't affect you at all. But if you are um, playing as someone else, and ooh, our Eastern claims, let's go demand... Oh, we can't demand Danzig. Um, oh, yes, Lithuania gave us Memel. All right, so they, we just got this little bit of territory right here. All right. And we cannot demand Danzig because why? We don't have a big enough army. Huh. Okay. Well, I'm going to put a small cut in here and I will be right back. Alright, and we're back after a minor interruption. You should not notice a difference. So, 950,000 manpower in divisions in the field. So we need to just have more troops, basically, is what they're saying here. Um... Uh, one of the following must be true. Is that war with is in a faction? Okay, so um, we are going to wait. Actually, we still need a national focus. Um, can't do the Mol or not going to do the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact because I anticipate we may actually end up at war with the Soviet Union alarmingly soon. Uh, second Lebjuzhlubla award. Uh, yeah, that seems like good. Uh, seems actually. Hang on. Fate of Greece. Does this let us? I I've never done the fate of Greece, so I don't know if it lets us annex them. Uh, what's required for war with Greece? Exists is at war. Um. So is this supposed to bring us? Oh, I see. It's supposed to bring us into the war with Greece. Um. Well, for the first time. For the first time in forever. No. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to do U-boat effort. But for the first time, we don't have any pressing need for any of our national focuses. So we're just going to hop on U-boat effort, which will give us some naval dockyards and good stuff like that. In the meantime, trade interdiction will wait on that. Um, air doctrine. Formation flying gives us air superiority. Air superiority is the most important thing in terms of uh, aircraft fighting in, in the, the air war here. Um, 
German right claims Bemmel. Yes. That's the thing we did. All right. Oh, we have extra divisions. These guys, uh, you are going to form a new army in, actually, no, in the On Han Han Theater. And you're going to go right here because once our paratroopers finish, we are, what I'm anticipating is we're going to land them somewhere here in the north of France. Um, and then we will deploy troops, namely these troops, um, up here. So it won't just be, our paratroopers' main goal will be to capture a port, namely Dunkirk, um, and then also this one in Normandy, um, so that A, they can get supplied, and B, we can uh, land more troops there. Since we're not at war with the English, we really only have to deal with their navy. So let's take a look at what are our, what is the Kriegsmarine doing right now? They are convoy raiding. All right, we're going to set you to patrol. Okay, so the way these four work, I should probably explain that now. Um, patrol has very wide... Oh, let's just pause so we're not... Patrol has very wide uh, spread. Search and destroy his tight. Convoy rating normal. And convoy uh, escort tight. So what this wide versus tight spread means is a tight spread means all the ships are really, really close together. So if they find an enemy fleet, they can just, like, really all fight them at once. If they're spread out wide, they're way more likely to find an enemy fleet because, you know, the ships are farther apart, right? So um, they're way more likely to encounter an enemy fleet, but they're kind of going to be all over the place and not really going to be well positioned to uh, start fighting them immediately. So obviously a widespread is really good for, con or a, um, was it convoy escort? escort? No. Uh, patrol is really, really good because it's wide. So if you think you if you just want to find them and you think you're stronger than them, then that's what we're going to do. Um, convoy raiding, normal. Um, search and destroy is if you think if you think you're about as even as their their fleet and you want to fight them at full strength, then you're tight. So you're less likely to find them, but once you do, you're in the best possible position. And then convoy escort is also tight because you're just fighting the fleets that they attack your convoys with. Uh, that's the long and short of it. So, also, what are our submarines doing? Untersee, Buten, Flotten, Wedidje, whatever. Convoy rating. Yeah, that's uh, that's fine. These white lines here are where convoys are going. These are ours, but um, I expect that the French probably have some going through the English Channel, Bay of Biscay. And if they're buying anything from the Americans, it'll have to go through here. Because that's how it goes. Alright. Research slot... Our mountain infantry is done. Let's look at um, navies. It's 1939. We're going to wait on destroyers. Otherwise, we're caught up on battleships and cruisers. Yeah, so we're we're good for our navy. Let's uh, land doctrine. Are we... We're not caught up on this. We're still waiting. Um, because desperate defense gives us so much more recruitable population with non-discriminatory conscription and Volkstrom. This, these two together are 5% recruitable population, when right now we have 2.5. Um, so these are really good. Artillery. Oh, yeah, we... Um, there's a lot we could research. 1939. Hmm. How's our industry? Oh, yeah, we can get more industry. All right, advanced machine tools. So we'll just... That'll just make us things faster. Um... All right. So obviously, because we have um, uh, Yugoslavia now, uh, we share a border with um, Romania, or we share two borders rather, with Romania and one with Bulgaria, which changes our dynamic around here somewhat slightly. Let's see. Romania sometimes joins the Axis, sometimes doesn't. Um, same with Hungary, and same with Bulgaria. Bulgaria. So we'll have to keep an eye on the oh, naval battle. How do we do? Oh yes, that's exactly what I want to see. So we're sinking their ships. Um, so this was a very successful naval battle for us. So they they have a couple submarines left, but we sank a lot of their navy while only losing three destroyers. So that's a re that's a really good battle. Gosh, we're just finishing this research left and right. Uh, aircraft, engineering. Let's get more concentrated industry here. All right. And, oh, here's another battle. 
So you, this is what it looks like when the battles are engaging. So we're winning this one hand over fist. Um, hence the red line and the blue line. The blue line's them and the red line's us. So that battle, they lost a few more ships. Um, radio detection is done. So we're going to do the next level of that. And we are also, what are we building? We're just repairing stuff right now because we have resistance, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, so resistance, this red stuff here, um, means that the Czechs are not pleased about their German oppressors. So um, they are really strong here. And we don't have any troops patrolling, so they're just going to get stronger and stronger. So they're going to blow up all these things and and lots of factories and really weaken our ability to, to or weaken our infrastructure and things in the regions where they're operating. We uh, So uh, our construction factories will slowly rebuild these, but not as fast as they can blow them up, obviously. Radar stations are something we're going to do. One there, one there, one there, and oh, we already have one. And one here, I think, as well as one there. All right. Now, because these, are, I think, are more important than some check factories, we're going to bump those up to the top by holding shift and clicking the up arrow. And those are being worked on. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, ooh, another one of these guys. You can hop in there. How are... Oh, paratroopers are almost done. How many transport planes do we have? Transport planes, we have five. May or may not be enough. Okay. Oh, so Zog has, King Zog has said, yeah, okay, 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 I surrender. Um, and Albania has um, given in to Italian occupation. We have naval, naval combat happening. Let's see. Ah, yes, we, we sank even more of their fleet. Uh, this is good. We're losing... I mean, these are pretty pitched battles, right? They lost four destroyers, submarine... Actually, this one was not a very good battle. Um, because we lost eight destroyers. So... Um, yeah, we really want to... Uh, how's our construction on these destroyers coming along? I think we might want to switch... Um, okay, we're going to make one more submarine. And then we are going to add... So, battleships, since we need some of those. Generally, for my navies, I try and do lots of destroyers, some battleships, and then an intermediate number of cruisers of varying sizes. Um, we're making three a month transport planes. Okay, well, it's not as many as I'd like, but it's enough. Um, so, in two years, this will finish. That's not very fast. But as we get more um, naval dockyards, that will increase in speed. Right now, obviously, our navy is not a huge priority for us. Um, oh, another guy capitulated. Our navy is not a huge priority for us right now, but it will be in the future. All right, it's December, 27th of December. We're just going to wait a few days, and then we're going to select the next research for the Narvik class destroyer what the difference between these two is. Can I compare them? No, I can't. Uh, fire range 16. Fire range 20. Torpedo attack. Alright, it's the 1st of January, 1940. So this means the 1940 technologies are no longer ahead of time. The first ones... Uh, well, let's see. We could do these. No, the first ones I think I want to do are these destroyers. I'm just comparing them here. Um... I think the uh, the M class might be better. Production. Oh yeah, the M class is definitely like more difficult to build. But I think I'm gonna go with this one. It's it's more expensive to build than the other destroyer, but it's just as uh, but it's far more effective as well. All right. So and on the first of January, 1940, the French are finally attempting to break through. Uh, uh, the West Wall, which is our, like, you know, equivalent to the Maginot Line. Not as built up, of course, but, you know. Um, and with that, uh, we are at 11 minutes. So we're over uh, 20 now. So I'm going to cut the episode here. Thank you so much for watching. 
uh, the German Reich has expanded. And next episode, I anticipate we will be uh, properly invading France. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.